All right, welcome to another video about home lab and sort of home related stuff. In today's video, we're going to talk about power monitoring. So how you can monitor where and what and when your power is being used. So we'll start by talking about the device that I'm using to do power monitoring, which let's see here. Boom. Okay. So I'm using this device called an IOTA watt and it is an open source uh, platform. The software is open source. You can download it, recompile it if you want. Um, and it is a power monitoring device designed to go into a power panel. And each one of these boxes has 14 inputs. The inputs are designed to use these little CD clamps. You plug this into an input. And then this little clamp is designed to go around a wire in your panel. And then it can measure the amount of current and then determine the amount of power going across a particular circuit. And these little CT clamps come in different sizes from 20 amps to 50 amps to 100 to 200 amps. Uh, and you can mix and match them as you need to. And so each one of these IOTA watt devices can measure 14 circuits. Um, and the device itself is wireless, so it doesn't need any type of uh, low voltage connection. Uh, and then it also can wirelessly upload to other things like um, InfluxDB for use with Grafana. And so I have a total of, I think, 14 of these in my house that measure uh, basically all the circuits on all the panels. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, more than one panel in different locations, you'll need a different one for each panel, of course. Um, and if you need more than 14 circuits, then of course you need an additional device. So some panels, I think I have two or three of these um, in them. Uh, so before we talk about what it looks like from a software point of view, let's go take a look at uh, how I have it installed. So let's take a look at the actual physical installation. So with each panel, below each panel, I've added a box. And that was when I did construction, I added those boxes below um, all 10 panels that are in the house so that every single panel has a little control box below it. Uh, and the idea is the control box holds the IOTA watt, which is the device that does the uh, power monitoring. And you can see each of the CTs plugs into a port and there are 14 ports on the IOTA watt. And those CTs go up a little conduit there uh, into the panel. And then these clip around each of the circuits. And then also I have one on every single circuit plus a pair on the incoming feed into this panel, both the uh, A and B side. Um, and then the IoT by itself measures voltage with one of these transformers and the other one is for power. Um, it's wireless, so there's no, I have a bunch of uh, low voltage wiring in this box, but it wasn't needed. These IoT watts are wireless, so they connect wirelessly and then do all the data upload um, from there. And so if you're gonna design uh, a new house, it's worthwhile to put these little panels below it and a little bit of conduit in between them because it allows you to have the IoT watts uh, in a nice enclosed box. Now you could have this inside of the actual electrical box. Um, it's wireless, so you don't need a low voltage connection in there, but there's not a ton of room in most panels. So while you probably could fit it in here, um, it would certainly still be a, a tight fit um, with both that plus all the CTs. So this is a little uh, easier way to do it. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, you, saw, you saw how I have it installed um, underneath the panels. Uh, let's take a quick look at what it looks like. So when you power it up the first time, it uh, has its own little Wi-Fi, you connect to it, and you can configure it to talk to your Wi-Fi. Uh, and then you can log into it and set up the device and give it a name and the time zone. And then simply you tell it, well, it's got 14 inputs. You tell it what type of CD clamp you have on each of the inputs. So these are 200 amp, 100 amp, and 50 amp. And it supports a bunch of different uh, brands of CT clamps. Um, and so you tell it what the inputs are, and then it allows you to create some outputs that are things that are calculated. So for instance, I have one here that's a total amperage across both the A and the B phase. Um, coming into this panel measured in amps. And you can also output things like power factor. Uh, and you can also set up these data uploaders, which is you can tell it, well, while you're collecting data, I want you to upload it to say InfluxDB. And if you go to status here, you can see you know, what 
is happening on this particular panel right now. So the panel is doing 8,000 watts, 68 amps. Uh, and the little uploader thing here will say that it's currently running and uploading into InfluxDB all of these uh, parameters. Um, one of the cool things about this device that I didn't actually know when I bought it, uh, but it turns out to be quite cool, is that it, you know, it had its own internal database. So you can see here that it's a 1.5 gig database right now in size. And so when it powers on and it's collecting data, it's collecting into its database. And then the uploaders run separately and pull from the database and upload. And what that means is that if you take your influx down for maintenance or because you're going to rebuild it or whatever, uh, it's okay because these will still keep collecting data and it records all the data. And then once it reconnects to the influx DB, it will then catch up everything that it missed and it's perfectly seamless. And so they're really cool because you can embed these in your panels and have them collect data uh, without having to worry about your server always being perfectly up to not miss anything because they, they save that data. Um, they do have a little graphing interface in here, where we are, where you can pick a variable and see uh, what it's recorded for that variable over time. Um, I don't use this a lot because I'm logging it into Influx. And so in my case, it's going to Influx, which goes into uh, Grafana, and that you know it gives you these charts. So this is the one that I had on the monitor um, that's in front of the server room, and so this shows you know the current panel power um, it's currently generating 4.3 kilowatts of solar. It's in the evening here. Um, and we can see that the server room UPS is taking 3.89 kilowatts right now. Um, but I have all of the panels in here so I can pick a particular panel and see everything in that panel, um, dishwasher, microwave, refrigerator, different plugs, um, on any one of these panels and see what, uh, object is drawing what power. And of course, all this is being recorded over time. You can you know, change this to the last 24 hours or the last 30 days, whatever you want. Um, and all this data is, of course, in the Influx database. And you can build custom things um, to see uh, if a power level goes above a certain amount. You can have it do an alarm or all kinds of cool variables you could do with uh, home automation. And so by just buying the IoT Watt and installing it in the panel and then setting up an Influx database, super easy to do, really straightforward. Um, you can have all of this stuff logged without a whole lot of extra work. Um, I'll mention that there are some, you know, there are other power monitors you can use. There are some things like the, uh, the Sense, which is a power monitor that uh, monitors just the main power coming in. It doesn't monitor individual circuits and it tries to learn how to guess what circuits are being used, which is, it works okay, but not great. Um, this device is awesome because it allows you to directly uh, measure every individual circuit, which is fantastic. Um, one thing I didn't mention on the device itself is that uh, when you do, 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 go in here and you print an output, um, you know, it's recording the voltage in real time. And then of course the amperage it sees on each of the circuits you have it monitoring. Um, but it also records the frequency of that as well as what's called the power factor. Um, and then the VA is a parent power, reactive power, and this is reactive energy. Um, those are useful things in understanding how a power factor can affect sort of the size of the wires you need versus the total amount of power actually being used called real power. Um, we'll do a separate video on this because it's an interesting topic that um, I think is good to understand if you're building a big lab um, of the difference between um, apparent power and real power. Um, but nonetheless, all these variables are recorded, so super easy to do. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about when you install it in a panel. So let's switch over to this. So this is a picture of one of my panels back during construction. And I was just going to talk a little bit about let's see here. So uh, typical US panel, so you have an A and B sort of phase or leg coming in, and then this is a neutral. And the voltage between the two legs is 240 volts. And the voltage between each leg and neutral is 120 volts. And so typically if you have a house plug in the US, uh, it's gonna be wired where only one wire goes to a breaker and the other goes to a neutral. And the panels themselves are kind of organized in kind of a neat way. They're done such that we'll say that uh, we're going to call this the, the 
red phase and then we have the blue phase over here and they're done such that the breakers that are across from each other in one row are the same from the same phase and then it skips a row and then the same phase and then skips a row in the same phase and then the next row below it is the other phase and the reason this is done is that then if you put a breaker and these breakers can go on one side or the other uh, that has two breakers it's attached to both the a and a b leg and what that means is that then you can hook up a device to both of those two wires that's 240 volts so if you have um, a dryer over here and your dryer is a 240 volt dryer uh, those two wires will be connected each one to a different part of that sort of uh, paralleled breaker and that gives you 240 volts meanwhile a 120 plug would have one wire going to the neutral and the other wire going to just one of the breakers and what this means relative to the whole power measurement thing is that when you install CTs, you typically will install probably a CT on each of the two incoming wires here. And that allows you to measure the total power coming into the panel, which is kind of the, the upper level value you want to know. Uh, and then you can install a CT on every circuit. But if you have a device that is 240 volts, um, you can install a CT on just one of the two wires. Because if there's no neutral coming out of the device, then all of the current going in one wire has to come out the other wire. And so you only need to measure with a CT clamp one of the two legs for a 240 volt device. Um, and sure enough, in the configuration, you tell it that this is one leg, but it's a 240 device. So it multiplies the total power by two. So it shows up properly. Um, and if, if you have 120 volt circuits, you would just have the 120 volt circuit on you know, each of the breaker outputs. Um, you don't generally put the CTs on neutrals. You could, I think I'm, in my main panel, I do have a, a CT on the neutral that um, goes back out to the grid. Um, but that is just more information about how balanced it is. Um, so yeah, so they're, they're pretty easy to install. You know, I said it's got 14 circuits, so you could figure out, you know, if you need more than one, you could put more than one in a box. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to, easy way to measure power and be able to see what, um, power you're using in your devices. And uh, we'll do another video and talk about power factor, which is a really interesting thing to understand um, a little bit about, about apparent power versus real power. So we'll cover that in another video. Um, but if you're looking for a good device, these IP watts are pretty inexpensive and they're compatible with all the cool nerd stuff. So it's a great way to collect data. That's all for now.